Okay, so let's look at uh, dual booting Windows XP, uh, our, our Windows XP system with Ubuntu. Um, and what I want to look at real quickly is just, I've got Windows XP here in a, in a virtual machine, and we're just going to reboot this system. All that I have on this system right now is Windows XP. There's no dual partition. This is just a Windows XP installation, uh, and it's, it, that's it. That's all there is to it. So as this reboots, I've got the Ubuntu uh, DVD uh, CD ISO uh, running off of that. So it's going to actually boot into the Ubuntu CD. So you're going to be prompted for your language from Ubuntu CD. And as I was saying before, if you are having trouble with the installer uh, through the live CD, try just clicking on Install Ubuntu and see if that gets by it uh, for you. But in this instance, we're just going to go uh, try Ubuntu without any changes to your computer and hit Enter. And that's going to actually boot from your uh, CD. So if you're, if you're wanting to fix a computer, if you want to get access to a computer's hard drive, if you can't boot your computer, if you've got a Windows XP system that has a like damaged uh, boot table or something that you can't get into the system, you can actually use this technology, this CD, uh, to boot that computer, get your files off of it, and then you know if you want to stay with Windows, you can reformat it, reinstall everything, but you've got a copy of your files. So. Wow, that's great. It's very cool. So this is almost booted up to the CD. CD booting is always a lot slower than booting from a hard drive, just FYI. But we'll go through how to actually go about uh, installing Ubuntu uh, on a system that already exists without wiping it out. That's great. Except for booting my VM, <laughs> which is going in slow motion, and it doesn't look like it's actually booting. How odd is that? Figures, eh? Let's give it another second before we hit the almighty kill switch. Uh-oh. I'm killing it. Uh-oh. Reset. I'm scared of doing Just in that. Case. Like I'm so scared of the blue screen of death, like I never <laughs> I never Well, in this case we're asking. we're actually booting from the CD, so okay. like we're not touching the hard drive yet or anything like that, so I'm not concerned. Um, okay. but it is a virtual machine, so uh, and I just installed Windows XP today for the feature, so hopefully this will boot up in time that we can get this going. Great. Oh my goodness. So Are we going to lose this feature tonight? Don't do this to me, virtual box. <laughs> Is that how you speak computer? Just gotta speak directly to it. Nanu nanu? Yeah. Oh, that's unreal. Okay, well, let's say what if we weren't able to do that feature tonight? Can we move it to next week? I think the viewers would be okay with that. I think they'd be okay with yeah. that. Yeah, sorry guys. Doesn't look like it's booting. So uh, my Ubuntu system has booted up here. How wonderful. Boom, let's go full screen here. Um, so basically what we want to do is, if you're able, double click on install, okay? And I think you're getting past this point, but um, let's not go with the default settings. Let's actually kind of customize the installer ourselves. Let's hope that this is going to run fast enough because we only have five minutes left and I really, really want to go through this. So this is the, in, the first screen of your installer for Ubuntu. You're probably familiar with this. It's okay. We don't need to go through all the details about how it works and things like that. Oh, zoom kind of makes my mouse wonky. There we go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to just get to the partition screen. So let's just keep saying next to everything. You can answer the questions according to your settings. Like right now I'm being asked for my region. I would normally set that to Toronto because of time constraints. I'm just going to leave it to New York. Set that to your time zone. That's going to set your clock, basically, and things like that. Keep it set to the, to the world clock. Okay, my keyboard is a US keyboard, so I just hit forward. You would set that if you have a, a keyboard from a different, uh, a different layout, different language, for example. Okay, now it is starting up the partitioner. This is what we want to see. This is what's going to get us somewhere. Detecting file systems, here we go. Almost there. We might actually pull it off. With four minutes to four spare. Minutes Look at this, guys. Eh? I know, and there are so many questions coming in the chat room. And yeah. if we don't get to your questions, please send an email um, yeah. or check out the forums this week. But definitely get onto our website, category5.tv. It's a completely free service. You don't even have to register to send us an email. Just click on interact, and you'll be able to send an email directly to our office. And uh, we'll do our absolute best to answer that for you on next week's show. Mm -hmm. Or you can just join us in the chat room again of and rephrase your question again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But email's a great way to do it as well. It makes sure that, you know, we've got it in queue. Yeah, that's great. Yay, my partitioner loaded. Okay. Excellent. So what now? Okay, what now? This is the 
partitioner for Ubuntu installer. Now you'll see the, the first option is a guided installation. It's going to automatically resize your Windows XP, but this is what we're going to stay away from is the automated thing. Let's do it manually because that's going to teach you so much because uh, this can be used to fix so many things. This can be used to um, overwrite your old Linux installation. This can be used for so much. So with a manual uh, partition, we need to make sure that we basically have three things, two things essentially if you've only got one hard drive. We need to make sure that we've got a slash folder and we need to make sure we've got a swap drive or a swap partition. So I'm gonna show you all about that in just a moment here. Ah, oh, CDs are so slow. <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, so you see my drive here. It's NTFS SDA1, okay? Let me get my mouse back. Come on. Don't have time. All right, it's just a 10 gig drive there in my virtual machine. What do I want to do? I want to right click on it and go edit because that NTFS is your Windows NT file system. That means that is my Windows XP. Let's just decrease the size of that. I'm just going to hold that in, bring it down to, uh, let's say, you know, let's say about uh, 5 gigs. We'll just round it up by just going 5,000, which isn't really 5 gigs, but... And then hit OK. That is going to shrink down our Windows partition so that we now have free space on our computer on that hard drive within the, uh, the size of that drive. It's going to ask me if I want to continue with that. It's warning me that it can't be undone. I'm going to say OK. So once you've done it, you've done it. There's no going oh, yeah. back. No going back. Well, you can technically. All we're doing okay. is shrinking down that. As long as you're shrinking it down within, because it tells you how much is used on that drive. Currently, 3.2 gigs are being used. Okay. So for me to shrink it down to 5 gigs, there's still 2 gigs left, basically. Right? Okay. So no problems. But I think we're going to run out of time. One so <laughs> we're going to have to pick it up next week. Isn't that unreal? Oh, Basically, what we're going to do at that point, that's going to give us now uh, a new amount of free space. So your free space is going to become a lot larger. Highlight your free space and go new partition table. You're going to select the partition type. It's going to be swap. And you want to set that to just a little bit more than how much RAM you have because you want to be able to swap whatever's in RAM if necessary. So if you've got 4 gigs of RAM, go ahead and make it an 8 gig uh, partition for the swap partition if you have enough space. Of course, in a virtual machine, that's not practical, but uh, in, a, in a real environment, that would work. Uh, and then once you've created that partition as, as Linux swap, then we're going to create another new partition. We're going to use up the entire remaining amount of free space. And from there, we're going to set that to the mount point as slash, just slash. That's going to be where your Linux is installed to, where your home folder goes, and things like that. If you have a second hard drive you want to put your home folder on, then we can create another uh, partition on that other drive, mount it to home, and we're going to be good to go. Once you've gone through that, you've created your partition table. It knows to create the swap and the slash folder. Uh, then you're going to be able to continue on with the installation. It's going to go through the installer and it's going to install Grub. And Grub is going to make it so that every time you turn on your computer from now on, you're going to actually uh, be able to select. Do you want to run Microsoft Windows XP or do you want to run Ubuntu Linux? Phew. So right. I didn't get to show you, but I got to tell you. So if you follow through with that, you should be okay. And if you break it, my disclaimer is it's your fault. 